Well, good day, folks. NB Wildman back here again with you. And uh, on today's video, we're going to talk about, and I'm going to show you a quick and easy setup uh, again. Uh, we're we're going to still focus on mink, doing a series on a few different sets for mink. And I got a bridge set and a blind set and things like that. And uh, today I'm on the edge of this little brook uh, that flows between two pieces of pasture ground. So something real common. Uh, that you'll find, you know, farmer's field on both sides and a, a little stretch of woods with a, with a small little brook in between. Uh, these are real honey holes when it comes to mink and muskrat. So I'm going to show you today how to identify a great setup or a great spot uh, on one of these little brooks to set up a blind set for mink. Uh, I'll be using a, uh, a 160 uh, conibear trap. Uh, I like to use the bigger trap, the 160s. Uh, I like to use them because there is the odd time you'll get an otter. There is the odd time you'll find a raccoon poking around. Uh, and I want a trap that's big enough to hold any incidentals, uh, as well as my target animals. So uh, we're going we're gonna to do that today in today's video. should be some fun. Uh, listen, if you haven't yet subscribed to the MB Wildman channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Uh, turn on that bell so that you get notified and we upload new content. Wouldn't want you to miss any videos. And uh, if you have, like always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, you want to share, leave them in the comments down below and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can with that. So anyway, without further ado, we're going to uh, take a little walk up this little, uh, up this little brook we got here. And I'm going to show you how to pick out and select the, the, the right location for this type of set. And then we're going to set it up and show you how we do it. All right, so we're coming down this brook and uh, we're looking for, this is a pretty typical, like I say, of in between a couple of pasture fields and uh, it's, it's low here in the fall. But um, anyway, what we're looking for as we walk down the brook is we're looking for any place that the water gets a little bit deeper. Like this is, this is pretty shallow right here, just a couple inches. And then out here it kind of, it deepens up a little bit and the water slows and then it goes around the corner. So. What we're looking for is any place that the water, when, when it's flowing faster, kind of washes an underneath spot in the bank. So we got like a little cove where the water goes around the inside or the outside of a turn, and it leaves us a spot that's big enough, tall enough to, uh, to put a conibear trap in. So we're looking for a little bit of deep water. No, not super deep. We don't have to have a drowning set. It's a kill set, so we don't need a drowning rig in here, but we're looking for six or eight inches of water. Uh, I guess maybe as much as four, you know, as little as four, I mean, um, along the edge of this brook. So that it's real shallow here, and you got a kind of a grassy bank. All right, perfect. There's what we're looking for right there. So as you come down here, you can see that the water pools a little bit right here, and it gives us a really nice underbank all along the edge right here. And then it continues around the corner and flows on downstream. This is gonna be a little hotbed for mink right here. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that. First of all, with the deep spot, you'll get some small crayfish and you'll get some small fish that will last here longer in the brook. Um, and the mink will be able to feed from the stuff that lives in this little, this little, um, this little deep spot, right? So they'll be here naturally anyway. Uh, and also, in underneath that bank where it's nice and cool, you'll find a lot of the, a lot of the prey that the mink like to like to feed on. You know, you get frogs that burrow down in there. Um, like say, you'll get crayfish, you'll get all those things that the mink like to snack on. So they'll be checking out this bank as they come down the brook. They'll be coming right around this rim underneath there looking for something to eat. So I'm gonna grab some tools and uh, this is a great location. So I'm gonna set this spot up right here and we'll show you what we do. Okay, so I've grabbed some gear off the bike and uh, selected this little ledge right under here where the water makes a swoop around. Uh, and there's a bit of an overhanging, you know, piece right here. Uh, so that's where we're gonna, that's where we're gonna focus the trap. Uh, I've grabbed a 160 that I've got and a couple of my, uh, couple of my 24 inch T-bar stakes. They don't need to be this long, but especially for this type of set, but it's what I had, so it's what I use, right? And I grabbed a set of setters. Uh, so just gonna set this up for you. So obviously we need to set our trap. Um, I always use a pair of safety setters um, when I go ahead and set these up. These setters lock when you, uh, when you pinch them together so that they can't spring open on you. So you can run them one-handed after, the, after you squeeze the springs, they lock. So you can just let them go and you got both hands to, to manipulate the trap spring if you need to or whatever. Uh, usually on these little ones you don't need that, but... Okay, 
so trap is set. Uh, trap is, or the springs are, trap's not set, but the springs are, springs are set, safety on. Uh, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the trap and I'm gonna bed it, not really bed it, I guess. I'm gonna set it right in underneath this bank. Right in under here, just as tight to the bank as I can get it. So I'm gonna take the spring uh, that's closest to the bank and it will point almost straight up. And then the other one will set out in the water. So it's gonna end up looking basically like that right there um, in the water. So you wanna set these with the dog up and I use the middle, I use the middle cog um, as far as as far as how to set that. I use the middle one. Okay, so this spring is going to set almost straight up, and this one is going to be out straight. Okay, and this is basically going to rest on the bottom um, of the bottom of this little brook here. Okay, so there we go. That's what this is going to look like, and it's going to set right in here nice and tight. Okay, I'm gonna put it right in here with that spring up. Just like that. Okay, just like that. So that anything coming around this bank is definitely gonna bump into that as they, as they skirt through. Okay, so let me see if I can get you a better look at that. Okay, so that right there is the setup that you want. So I got a couple inches sticking out of the water and the rest of the trap is down in. And it's tucked up close to that bank so that anything that's coming around, you know, this area here, it's gonna come right around here, go through there to keep going around the circle. It's gonna, it's gonna hit that. Okay, so it's kind of a blind set, um, but a real good one when it comes to, uh, when it comes to mink. Again, like you say, you're going to get the odd raccoon, you're going to get the odd muskrat, but for the most part, this is a mink set. Now that I have it sitting here, uh, I grab my T-bar stakes, and there's, we're going to use one for certain on this outside arm, okay, angled. So I put it through the, the spring, and I angle it a little bit. And just tap it in. So the angle of the stake, the angle of the stake is designed so that I can just get the edge of it in between the jaws of the conibear trap, and that will really help to stabilize it. Should something big bump it, instead of going right through it, if they bump the edge, I don't want the trap to fall over. So when I drive this through the spring and into the ground, into the base of the stream here, and then I push it so that the, the bar is just, just inside, okay? So it doesn't close up the area too much, but it helps to stabilize that trap. I don't have to do anything on the inside because I'm using the bank there for support, okay? And then once that's done, I just take another stake. Uh, just in case I do catch something quite a bit bigger, uh, I'm gonna find the end of my trap chain here and I'm gonna drive this stake um, pretty deep. There we go. Okay, so I've got that one driven down there real deep. Um, and the reason I do that is simply because if I do get an otter in here, I do get a raccoon in here, uh, I don't want them going anywhere. So I still want them to be here when I get back. So uh, anyway, that's it for this set. And I hope that this will help you out on your line, uh, give you a kind of an idea of what you, what you should be or could be looking for uh, when it comes to when it comes to mink running up and down the edges of these little brooks. Um, and like I say, these little brooks, these are, these are great and there's a lot of game on them. I would probably set, you know, in the length of this farmer's field, which is, oh, he's got about 500 yards, 600 yards from where I can access it up the edge of his field. I might set three or four sets like this, maybe even five, depending on what it looks like. Um, so you can just kind of walk up the edge of the brook and take a look in and see what you got and keep on moving on. So. Anyway, hope this helps you out. Uh, this is MB Wildman here, and uh, until next time, happy hunting from the MB Wildman channel.